The following is a reflection on the readings for Tuesday of the fifth week of Easter. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 14, verses 19 to 28. The responsorial is Psalm 145, and the gospel is John chapter 14, verses 27 to 31. Today's gospel continues the upper room discourse on Holy Thursday. Jesus says, quote, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. End of quote. On this final evening before Jesus' violent death, he confers the gift of peace on his apostles. At the same time, he bids them to rejoice over his going to the Father. Are these two connected? Yes. Jesus ascends to the Father in his glorified body, which then becomes the instrument through which the Holy Spirit is poured out by the Father and the Son onto the church at Pentecost and thereafter in the sacraments. This is prefigured on Easter Sunday, when the risen Jesus passes through the locked doors where the apostles are for fear of the Jews, and says, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, even so I send you. And he breathed on them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here are the essential elements for peace. The Holy Spirit present in our souls, acting as counselor, advocate, and consoler, and elevating us into a share of God's own Trinitarian life of beatitude. Through this grace we become children of God and heirs of heaven. So long as we are in a state of grace, our hearts are therefore untroubled and without fear. And if we should sin mortally, the sacrament of reconciliation is available to restore us once again to God's friendship. There are two additional elements Jesus confers on this most blessed evening. First, he enacts the Eucharist, bringing out bread and wine, and saying, This is my body which is given for you. This chalice which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Second, Jesus confers ordination on the apostles as priests and first bishops by commanding, Do this in memory of me. So, with the grace of the Holy Spirit in our souls, reconciliation when needed, and finally, blessed communion with the one we love in the most intimate way, lasting peace is attainable. We see the effects of this peace in today's first reading from Acts chapter 14. While Paul and Barnabas are preaching the good news in Lystra, some Jews stir up the crowd so that Paul is stoned and dragged out of the city and left for dead. But he is surrounded by the disciples and gets up, wounds and all, and, undaunted, proceeds to the next town for more preaching. Paul does not get discouraged, nor does he allow fear to set in, because, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, he and the disciples are sharing in the peace of Christ that transcends understanding. Notice that before Paul leaves the city, he and Barnabas, after praying and fasting, appoint elders for each of the churches. The word appoint means to extend hands, that is, ordination. This ensures that the seven sacraments are available so that the same Holy Spirit would be poured out on all who come forward as well as the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. The result? Peace in such a dramatic form that the pagan Roman Empire is converted. For us today, the words of Christ regarding peace are incorporated into the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In the communion rite, we have this stunning paragraph, 
Quote, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Notice that the word peace is repeated five times just before receiving Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. At the dismissal of the Mass, the words are, Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thus, like the early church, we are sent out into a secular culture with a peace that transcends understanding, which is in itself a powerful witness. To ensure that God's peace is ever growing within our souls, let us be immersed in his supernatural life by our fervor and frequent devotion to prayer, reception of the sacraments, and our works of charity, so that we are on fire with the love of God. As St. Augustine wrote in his work on the blessed life, quote, Whoever possesses God is happy. End of quote. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope, that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>